In this video, I'm going to give you a coach's perspective on what happened between Mary Kane and Alberto Salazar. And as somebody who's worked with a lot of athletes Mary's age, it could have gone a lot differently. I think it's terrible what he did to her. Um, I think that it could be very damaging to the self-esteem of, like, if that happened to me, I know I might take things a little too far with how I would go about losing weight. I've been working with middle school, high school, and collegiate level runners for the last 20 years. I estimate I've worked with over a thousand runners in that time, and at least half of them have been females. Now, I know I've made some mistakes in talking to my female athletes, and there's definitely some things I regret. But time and experience has taught me some valuable lessons on how to work with female athletes and talk about some sensitive issues. So take this for what it is, one coach's experience. A few weeks ago, distance running sensation Mary Kane publicly criticized Nike, the Oregon Project, and her coach Alberto Salazar for what she described as physical and emotional abuse. After becoming a national high school record holder, at age 16, Mary signed on with Alberto and his elite training program. She claims that she was routinely and publicly shamed to lose weight. She was weighed in front of her teammates and forced to take birth control and diuretics. This treatment caused her to suffer emotional damage as well as multiple physical problems, including fracturing five bones. Alberto disputes these claims. To be clear, I'm not here to pick sides or pass judgment on anyone. I'm just doing what I do on this channel, passing on my coaching experience to anyone who cares. Like every athlete knows their body better than everyone else and if the athlete is communicating to me that this doesn't feel right and that it's unhealthy, the coach needs to adjust the way that they're trying to improve the way that they run. Mary states that Alberto wanted her to drop her weight down to an arbitrary 114 pounds. If that's true and it was just a made up number, then she's right. That doesn't make sense. She did say, though, to ESPN that weight is arbitrary and not different between males and females. Well, I'm sorry, that's not true either. While it might be an arguable topic for some people, there are differences between men's and women's bodies and their potential. In general, men have the ability to gain more muscle than women. That extra muscle makes it easier for them to be leaner and also to have increased strength, which can lead to increased power output. That's important because the ability to run fast is highly affected by the ratio between our strength and our weight. Simply put, the heavier an athlete is, the more power it will take them to move. The lighter they are, the less energy is needed. If you don't believe me, take it up with Isaac Newton. It's the second law of motion. But it's not quite that simple. There are individual differences to consider as well. Not everybody will be healthy at, say, 114 pounds. Forcing an athlete to be less than their optimal weight can lead to lots of problems, including a decrease in performance. Just ask Mary. By the way, although I'm trying not to pass judgment, Mary has never looked overweight or overfat to me. Um, I feel like coaches should teach strength rather than like losing weight. And I feel like as an athlete, you know how your body works. So I think that's really wrong of him. I feel pretty confident that I've worked with more young female athletes than Alberto. So I have an advantage here. Here's what I know to be true. Females internalize discussions about their weight very differently than their male counterparts. But Rather than hear from me, let's hear what some other female athletes have to say. I feel like it would really change the way I saw myself as an athlete. Um, it would make me second guess everything that I was doing. Um, I would definitely have a very low self-esteem. If he came off in a very you know, professional manner, I don't think I would take offense, but if he were to say, hey, like, looks like you need to lose some weight, then I probably would take some offense to that. I'd probably tell him to f off, honestly, but that's just me, so yeah. Here's what I recommend to coaches and parents that are dealing with young female athletes. In most cases, just don't bring up the topic of weight. The vast majority of school-age athletes, while competitive, are mostly recreational about their sport. They don't have super serious ambitions about their future as a competitive athlete beyond high school. For them, there's no reason to risk affecting their self-esteem for life just so you can score some more points or a league championship that'll be meaningless in just a few years. So what do you do when you have one of those athletes who's very talented, very committed, they've come to you because they really want you to help them with their goal, but weight is an issue? 
In those cases, I think you do have to have a conversation. In fact, I would argue that you're obligated to have that conversation. You owe it to them to give them everything that you can. You can't just give them a partial truth. Now, it's how you handle this that makes the difference. So here's what I recommend. First and foremost, always talk to the parents first. You might find out some things from the parents that you didn't know, some personal issues that might be influencing this situation and it might be best for the parent to take over the conversation from here. Or they might want to join you on the conversation. But a lot of times, because you've gained their trust, they'll give you the go-ahead to talk to their daughter. If you're a male coach, consider either deferring the conversation to another female coach, or at least have a female coach with you. But every case is different. Make sure that the athlete understands that your words are not a criticism of their appearance, but rather coming from a place of performance. Any plans for weight loss needs to involve a nutritionist or dietitian. I also recommend body fat testing to determine the safe amount of fat or weight that can be lost and still be healthy and performing at a high level. I hope this helps. As always, I want to help coaches, athletes, and parents. I just want to do my part to ensure that no other female athletes have to be devastated by the words of their coach, even if they're well intended. If you'd like to learn more, I'd like you to consider subscribing to this website, Ace Method Coaching. And also, if you want to learn more, you can go to my website at acemethodcoaching.com. I'm Mike Caton, and I'm passing it on.